much like every season we have done High Five Journeyman, ends up being a season of disappointment as Inter narrowly miss out on the title to rivals AC Milan. It was even further disappointment as we were knocked out in the round of 16 to PSG in the Champions League, the semi-final of the Coppa Italia and not even getting to the final of the EA Sports FC Super Cup. So what can we do for this season 10 of the High Five Journeyman and our fourth season with Inter Milan? Well before we get into the episode, why don't you like the video and subscribe to the channel? I want to get to 180 subscribers for the start of FM25, either the BR or the main game. Either's fine, but I want to get to 180 subscribers before that point. As I'm recording this, I'm on 177 subs. So there's three more, three of you watching this now, and I can get to that. So for everyone who's watching up to this point, literally hit the subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and you get hopefully good content from now until I don't know 100 years in the future when I'm long gone. Well this is the first thing that happened is Italy without me even applying have approached me to become their manager and I've accepted it so I'm not going to be focusing on this uh, international management as much as the club management mainly because next year in fm25 there's not going to be any international management until at least fm26 i still have hopes that they'll add it in a winter update but uh i think they said that they're not doing that so yeah um so i don't want to focus it on much because otherwise i'll just get upset but being italian manager is not that bad if we go to the schedule on what's happened since the start of the game they apparently qualified for the Euro qualifiers in 2023 before getting knocked out in the second round to Norway in 2024's Euros. They managed to stay in the group, I think, in Nation League's A Group 1. They qualified for the World Cup undefeated. They got to the second round of the World Cup and then not got knocked out to Turkey. Game did well in the Nations League and even got to the th semi-final before losing to England and winning the third playoff. European Championship group, they were knocked out in the second round. Not good one bit. Apparently the host of that one, I assume. Nations League A Group 3, they, of course, they got they got through again and actually won the Nations League. The World Cup, it looks like they qualified and got to the quarter-final before losing to Portugal. Nations League Group A, the did well again, qualifiers for the Euros, got all the way through to the qualifiers before losing the semis to Spain. And that's Donato Ronchi's turn to take the Italians to another trophy, hopefully not at England's expense. So we've got a uh, Nations League A Group 1 where we've got Portugal, Poland and Switzerland in our group. I think we can easily top that. Uh, and then I think the World Cup hasn't been decided, but we should really be qualifying as an Italian team. But basically, we end up coming back to our old guys. Well, are any of them in our actual old Bastoni, yeah? He's one of our old guys. We've also got Ventrelli from Eintracht Frankfurt, who's still at Eintracht Frankfurt. However, it looks like that right winger striker guy who I think was Italian from Eintracht Frankfurt. Doesn't look like he's in the national setup, but Ventrelli is literally the best right back probably in the world. So yeah, he's very good. And I'm glad that I, I picked him for Eintracht Frankfurt all those years ago, 26 million. It was expensive back then, but it's sure playing up to be perfect now. I actually forgot to say, um, last season, the board were expecting me to win the title. And of course, we didn't win the title, so they got a bit unhappy. But our jobs coverage never went insecure, any. But they were just saying unhappy that they failed it. As you can see, they were satisfied about qualifying for the Champions League. Kind of shows how the season we've started, just as a bit of a hint. <laughs> but transfers. So we've only signed five players in the end. Uh, Manuel Lopet Tuso. He was director of football signing from the end of last season in January. He was out on loan at some club and so he's joined us after his loans deals ended. And he's left his 
club to join us. And then we signed an old player. I think, if I remember correctly, last episode I said, yeah, I'm going to sign this guy. I said it was Colombian. I said we had him at an old club that's in South of Vigo. As you can see, he was playing for, he was joined at Independent Midland. We signed him in the third season for £500,000. We were going to be playing him in the fifth season, but we ended up leaving Tron Track Fan for, he ended up to play seven times then for them. And then he was the regular. For the season previously, he went to buy it for £38 million. So they got a big profit there for him. Pay well, they got thirty-seven and a half million pound profit for signing him from Independiente Medellin. And we've paid the big bucks for him, but he's probably the world's best goalkeeper. Ninety-five million pounds, rising to hundred and five million. He's on two hundred and seventy-five thousand pound per week at twenty-four years old. He could be literally with us for another ten years. So yeah, he's signed for Bayern. As I'm a goalkeeper because Ramsdale was getting old, we also looked to sell Ramsdale, which we have. Then one Ignacio Corte. I signed him mainly because he's Italian and at 21 years old, he could improve a tiny bit. I'm going to try and loan him out, but £5.5 .5 million deal, literally, is so cheap, it's just worth it. Then Nicolas Vazquez, another player that's joined us, he's Uruguayan. Comes in as our um, non-EU player. He is a centre back, DM, and right back. So he can play three positions in the side that we play. Uh, he could get really, really good at 20 years old. Comes in for 3.5 million pounds from National in Uruguay, and then we signed a new striker, Leighton Beardling, has joined us from Everton. He has been a regular goal scorer, not over 20, but in decent goal scoring form. I'm going to basically see him how he is for a couple of seasons. If he's no good, we might get another replacement in and sell him. But as if he do, as in if he doesn't get like 20 goals a season. But 60 million pound rising to 78 after he plays like I think 10 is if he gets five international appearances or something like that or 20 or something and another whatever the rest of the matter is or on 50 goals so if he scores 50 goals i think he'll be worth it but as you can see he started off brilliantly scoring three goals in four games so far but yeah he comes in from everton and the sales botoli or botarelli botarelli yeah um he has been loaned out to udinese then we sold michael petrini for 2.1 million pounds to Crescenza. He had a really good amount, of, like literally, he was doing brilliantly out on loan. 12 goals on his first loan deal with Brindisi in Serie C. Uh, Ascoli didn't do too good, but then he went to Benevento in Serie and did brilliantly, scoring 21 goals. Then he dropped down the division to Venezia, but that's probably because Venezia have a big reputation. And he scored 29 goals in 40 games there, so he's really a Serie B, Serie A player. Uh, I had a lower Serie A, high in Serie B. Casenza trying to get promoted or signed him. And yeah, I think he'll be a good player for them. But for us, I just couldn't see him improving when we're getting people in like Beedling who were the real deal straight away. Petrini wasn't, and he would have to have some work to do to get him to that level. Uh, we also sold Karomi Diallo. He was a signing done in January when we literally had no uh, important transfers like we because we were swimming head on the holiday in mode um, we signed for £75,000 on 210 <laughs> yeah never trust the director for what to do a decent job also learned out Glenn Price just because of um, Beedling coming in and I want to give more better players chances and who are Italian homegrown and Italian uh, it's into Milan trained uh, for Champions League matches and all that, so he isn't, so we loaned him out um, to Freiburg. We sold with Mark Chappell, who was a signing a few seasons ago from Rother no, from Aston Villa. Um, he'd been on loan at Rotherham, and then we immediately signed him. No, we signed him the year after uh, for £650,000, rising to 825000 In the end, he had two successful. I would say spells not really good on the average, but he played a lot at Bari and Portsmouth. 
Luton have come in for him, eight hundred thousand pound, one point one million. If he pays like thirty or feel forty games, I thought it's worth it because he's leaving at the end of the season no matter what. Because I wasn't going to give him a contract as long as the dreadful football didn't give him one. So yeah, getting money for him. Well, we could is a good idea. Then Nwanko, who I wanted to keep, we signed for fourteen and a half million pounds the season previously, and he only played two games. He was extremely unhappy that he wasn't getting that game time, and so we just got fed up and sold him for seven point five million. So Roma signed from Inter Milan and sold him up on nearly half, less than half the deal to us and then we sold him for half the deal to Al Khalij in Saudi Arabia. Then Bastoni was sold, who you might have noticed when we were talking about joining uh, the Italian national team. But 37.5 million pound, it was 31 but it was like 37.5 if he plays one game which he already has, he's played three now. Um, not done too badly as they always do in Saudi Arabia but yeah he's a brilliant player and when it comes to those seven and a half million for a player who next season will not be good enough and within a season or two will be retiring just sell them and that we did and then Aaron Ramsdale was sold to Newcastle in the end and uh, clubs were coming in for him from Saudi Arabia but they weren't offering nearly enough in the end we told him we'll sell him for 30 million but in the end, that was just the base map money you said you agreed with at the start. Like when you do the negotiations, he says like 30 million up straight away, and I was like, okay. But in the end, it was always to sign him in the 20 millions when the Saudi Arabian teams were only trying to sign him for like 15. Uh, in the end, Newcastle paid 20 million for pound for him, so yeah, he's gone to them. Massi Miliano Moretto has also been loaned out once again because he has no position for us to play in his tactic. I think next season we'll look to sell him, but yeah, he's been loaned out um, through Cremonese. Augustin Aquino, that player we signed two seasons ago when he was 18, um, he's not improved much, he's still two and a half, so I can't remember to, but he's been loaned out again because I just don't feel he has a place in the squad. Uh, he has gone to Marseille. Francisco Rivero could be in our plans this season. He's been loaned out to Strasbourg. Hopefully he gets good there. And Luca Menini, who we're trying it maybe sell next season. He's been loaned out to Cremonese as well. And yeah, all the rest of the loans are just people who are one and a half star or lower that might get good, but probably not needing to be talked about right now or will never get good and we'll either be let go at the end of the season or in a couple of seasons or we'll, we'll be eventually sold which we then will talk about them but yeah we have started off quite awful they were lost to Genoa 4-2 did turn it around with the Bologna win but then lost Roma and then won against Torino to Suolo currently we are sixth, uh, five games into the season, three wins, two losses, zero draws, five goal difference, nine points. Lazio, Napoli, Cagliari, Milan and Juventus are all doing better. In fact, Juventus are five from five. Yeah, much improving needed. I think I'm going to stick with the tactic, even though it started off quite poorly, as you can see. Um, Gustavo Enrique, Enrique is already unhappy. Apparently we had to accept him to be an important player when he joined us uh, last season. Um, but yeah, important player. He's not in a important player. He's a well, squad player but impacts up. And Alberti also wants to leave because he wanted to go to Swastopolo to further his development. But he's only going to be our first team plans for the season. Just to see how he goes. How many games he does get played and all that stuff. In terms of the people we are locking in, we are only locking one person. Angelini's now just so good as our right back that he's always or, always automatically the best right back in the side, so he doesn't have to be locked in anymore. But we're locking in this guy, Javier Garitano, who is a Spanish international. He's playing one time for Spain at 17. He was signed by the Dutch football in January a couple of seasons ago. And yeah, he's turned out to be a really, really good player. 1.6 million in the end, but it was originally 1.2, so I think he got was 1.6 if he played like one international appearance. So I think he's played that international appearance or played one game for us or whatever. Now he's, yeah, 
um, 1.6 but he looks like a real good player and I want to get to play him and get him to his potentiality so I'm playing him I don't think Pejanovic who we were playing last season has a high ceiling current um, potentiality I think he might have even reached the current ability it, with his current ability so I'm not locking him in for this season but Garitano I definitely am and while it's still not gone quite good uh, we ended up losing to Newcastle in the Champions League though we did beat Liverpool uh, we've also lost Cagliari and drawn with Atlanta we were normally thrash Cromanese we also lost to Napoli we lost to Stuttgart we lost to in the Champions League and then we've drawn with Lazio Juventus and lost to Milan so we are massively off the pace 18 games in we've won nine drawn three and lost six yeah not oh not brilliant at one bit uh 30 points in the end we're 13 points off the top that play and five points off fourth place juventus criminese are doing massive uh third place in the league with 36 points i just hope that they don't get Champions League football at our expense. I think I'm going to stick with the tactic. I'm still locking in Garitano. I'm, I'm going to keep the tactic. I don't think it needs to change. I don't know how good it can be. I just hope that we turn this around. Otherwise, I'm being sacked. In terms of people who are unhappy, um, Tombo's unhappy because um, he's now a fringe player. He was an important player and we've changed it to fringe player because he wasn't happy anyway. And now he's unhappy over that. He'll get over it. Um, Sachi, he's unhappy because he wants to go out on loan to score a permanent move. Next season I'll be looking to sell him I think. And Alberti is the same as always. He wants to go out on loan to Sassuolo to help further his development. Uh, but yeah, uh, if we can get... A uh, profit on Sachi, which I highly doubt because if I go 15 million with Silent Four, he's worth 6 million now. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to lose money on him, but hey, that's it's fine. If we quickly look at the Italian games, we did horribly in the Nations League. We only won one game, which was against Switzerland, which stopped us from being relegated. Uh, we also drew with Switzerland and Portugal and Poland. And then lost to Portugal and Poland. Portugal win the thing with 14 points. We're six points way off the top, and um, quite far off distance from second best. So yeah, we're really not good there. But we have started off brilliantly in the UEFA World Cup qualifiers Group B. Uh, we've been drawn with Croatia, Bulgaria, Azerbaijan, San Marino, Wales, Wales, Croatia, and Bulgaria probably the toughest I think we can beat Bulgaria quite easily and we have that away from home so creatures like can we beat them away from home can we beat Wales away from home all the other games I'm expecting wins so we should qualify and so far we've been Croatia 3-1 at home and Bulgaria 2-1 away from home but with the league and Inter Milan we just I mean just qualified for the Champions League otherwise our job would have been out of it we would have been sacked if we go to past positions we go towards Juventus and Cremonese as you can see Juventus were top for ages they eventually got quite far down we were fought for quite a while but we dropped down to fifth and meanwhile Cremonese were like you know what we're being third and in the end, Cremonese lost on the final the game of the season, dropping down to fifth. Juventus leapfrogged them, and so did us. And yeah, we finished fourth, got Champions League football. Cremonese did brilliantly, but I'm glad it wasn't at our expense them getting Champions League football. It was us getting Champions League football at Cremonese's expense. Much better. But as I just noted, Florentino have been relegated, which, yeah, that is... Kind of a surprising move because they're normally a good side. But yeah, Napoli have won it for the second time in three years. And then we have now not won it for six seasons or seven seasons if you count. Yeah, seven seasons. Four wins for Milan, two for Napoli in that period of six seasons. But yeah, uh, it's not good enough. In terms of the other competitions, the FIFA Club World Cup is happening. 
Well, we have been tied with Arsenal, Corinthians and LAFC. I'm expecting qualifiers to quarterfinals in that round. I want quarterfinals, so if I can get quarterfinals like they're expecting, I'd be happy with that. Champions League, we were not tight in the quarterfinals to Liverpool. Quite thrashed in the end, to be honest. Uh, we beat Valencia in the round 16 and beat Milan in the playoff round, knockoff playoff round. Uh, and then we finished 14th. So still, we're not gaining top eight. We always struggle with the Champions League, League stages. The Coppa Italia, however, we won. We won our second trophy with Milan, our third trophy overall, beating Cagliari 3 0 in the final. If we go to what we face, we face Salernitana in the third round, beating them 2 0. Quarter final, we thrashed Bologna 6 1. In the semi-final, we ended up being Milan 4-0 on aggregate, 2-0 away from home and 2-0 at home. And yeah, final, we thrashed Cagliari and won us a trophy. And in the Esports FC Super Cup, we beat Juventus in the semis and lost to Milan 1-0 in the final with a 30th winner, winner for Teo Hernandez. Yeah, successful in terms of the Cups. I'd say successful in terms of the Champions League because, to be honest, Italian football was nowhere near as good as the other leagues in the top five. To get into the quarterfinal is, to be honest, quite an achievement. It's only quite unfortunate that we ended up beating Milan so they didn't get to the next round either because um, if we had been playing them in the knockoff playoff round, both could easily have got through to the quarters and then we ended up would have had maybe qualifying for the Champions League if we had finished fifth um, but in the, end, in the end that didn't matter which is good in terms of everyone's player stats Mudrick got the most free kick goals with two Nevaeh's got the most clean sheets uh, drawing with Renato but Renato must have played less games or something like that so he won it all top tip interceptions per 90 minutes Dedic was the highest with 369 our oh, 3.69 and Angelini was third with 3.34 terms of team overview stats we were third on most goals not as many goals as normal and Napoli were amazing maybe not brilliant from that bird link or whatever that guy was we signed this season um, we had second fewest goals few shots against but still nowhere near as shots against as Milan um, sixth on average possession so we get better on the possession nowadays dribbles made we were fourth conceded we were fifth um, maybe do better there considering we, we conceded 38 and Napoli only conceded 30 uh, never is needs to be a bit better uh, I think clean sheets we were third with Milan uh, we were nowhere near tackles won, nowhere near pass completion, what we never are. Shots fall, we were top, but just barely for Milan. And yeah, we were fourth on point per game, going with Cremonese. The players, um, Dean Henson, like I said, has announced his retirement, so we need a backup goalkeeper for next year. I think Gaspertina could be good for third choice. Uh, he is yet to play. Um, since he played in the first season, he's only played four games and considered four. And he played all his four games in his first season when he was our second choice. Now he's our third choice, I would say. But most appearances was Narvaez, then Guerra, then Aaron Buru. Aaron Buru played a lot of games. And Garitano played fourth most games and he's now two and a half star coming ability. Beedling played fifth. Then it was Angelini, then uh, and Diamande and stuff like that. Goals, Beeling did get the most goals with 26, but it's nowhere near Latoro Martinez worthy. Beeling scored 26 goals in 46 starts. Um, Hinart, Hiriart, and Glenn Price didn't do too badly on loan, but after that it was just poor in terms of the goals scored. Bailey only got 12, Mudrick got 12, which is good for him to be fair. Guerra got 11, Aaron Buru got 10, uh, Angus did get 8, Isaac got, Isaacson is not um, as good as last season or the season before and or whatever, they only got 7 goals, uh, Manzi got 6 and Lavia got 5. 
In terms of assists, Mudwick got the most with 14. Then Amber we got 11. Aquino got 12 in the end. He's improved all the way to three and a half star. Good job we loaned him out to Marseille. Um, Guerrero got 11. Angelini got 9. Iglesias didn't do bad on loan uh, with 9. No, with 8. Uh, Menini didn't do bad on loan either with 8. Uh, Isaacson got 8. So, not like I said, not nearly as good as he normally does. Carboni only got 7. Bielin got 6. Company didn't do badly with 4 goals and 5 assists. Uh, Lavia got 5 goals and 5 assists. And uh, clean sheets, in the end it was 24 clean sheets in all competitions for Novaez. And in terms of average rating, Mudrick got the most average rating with a 7.24. Nowhere near as good as normal. And Carboni also got 7.24. Then it went to Beedling, to Guerrero, to Isaacson, to Bernardo, to Dedic. Bernardo's actually improved to full star now. That is shows how good he is. And then some loanees like Plyas and Savi. Uh, Amburu got over a 7. Moretta got over a 7 out on loan. Lavi got over a 7, so did Angelini, so did this guy, Castaneras, who's now 2 star, corner ability. Might look to play him more next season. But yeah, in the end, it is an awful season. Probably our worst we've had with Inter. And I'd say along the lines, has even been worse than the Celta Vigo. With Celta Vigo, at least we're expected to be that position. Actually, no, we finished 14th near once or 15th once, so maybe Celta was worse. Yeah, probably Celta being worse. But it's worse with a big club like Inter that are expecting like, titles every other year. Uh, I'll quickly show you something because if I go to club info and landmarks, we had the Tycoon takeover. Badu, the owner who I think owns an uh, Inter in real life, the Chinese owner, um, he kept trying to get the club sold over the course of well from when we joined and they all kept feeling like could sort him promotion for them could sort him promotion for the men from within they all kept failing in the end young jai kim as a tycoon has taken over from us and he has given us 186 million pounds spend and we've got 105 million pound in the balance yeah, i might i might go a bit mad who knows maybe maybe not who knows but yeah if you've enjoyed this episode like the video subscribe to the channel as well for my 24 videos subscribe to the channel if we can get to 180 subscribers by the end of fm24 i'll highly appreciate it so thank you in advance if you do decide to subscribe you can check out all the socials down in the description below and come join the discord and all that stuff but yeah i've been matthew austin and some hacks I shall see you next time. Hex Sangal. Bye everybody.